Hey, everybody. How you doing? This is Jim Grisanzio from Oracle. We're back tonight to talk, you guessed it, Oracle Developer Live, Java Innovations, the big conference coming up at the end of the month. Uh, and I'm here with Trisha G from JetBrains. Trisha, welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's nice to meet you here for the first time. I've seen you out and about at, at various conferences and online, of course, and uh, this is the first time we're meeting. So it's really great for me. And um, you're at JetBrains and you're one of the speakers and I've been uh, profiling some of the speakers at the conference. So um, you're going to be talking about uh, Java 16, new features in IntelliJ. As developers, we're trying to learn the latest versions of Java um, as we go. It's kind of difficult to do our jobs and learn new, new versions of Java as you go, particularly now we have the six monthly release cadence and it feels like we're getting new features in Java. Well, we are getting new features in Java every six months. So like, how can we stay on top of this pace of change? And um, one of the, the great things is that your IDE, if you're using something like IntelliJ IDEA, can help you learn what the new features in Java are and adopt them. So it can show you places in your code where you could be using new features that you weren't necessarily aware of. So my session is going to be about how IntelliJ IDEA helps you learn the new features in Java so you can kind of get up to date without necessarily investing a, 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 a lot of time in, um, in reading books necessarily or, or going away and finding out more information about the new features in Java. Right. Now, you mentioned the six-month release cycle. I'm just interested. Has the release cycle itself actually affected how you develop your product? So it's, it's very interesting because we like to provide features that help Java developers learn the new features. We want to be able to adopt the new features in, um, in Java as soon as possible. So we're usually working with the early access version of Java um, and we're, we release IntelliJ IDEA three times a year, whereas Java releases two times a year. Um, so we are fortunate in each release of IntelliJ IDEA can support the most recent version of Java. But it's also a little bit challenging because one version of IntelliJ IDEA comes out in March, which is around about the same time as a version of Java. But another version comes out around about July and another in November, which means the September Java release, you kind of get like half the features early in July and half the features um, a little bit late, if you like, in November. So right. it's quite challenging. Interesting. That's really interesting. Now, usually when I ask that question, I've always been asking it from the perspective of how it affects Java development itself in terms of the core platform. Um, but, but now this is a whole different thing about how it affects the community as well and all the companies or all the companies, you know, within the ecosystem. So, interesting. yeah. And it's, it's important for us as, as JetBrains and as IDE vendors to support that six monthly release cadence. We can't right. just be like, well, that's a bit too fast for us. We can't keep up with us. We can't keep up with it. We want to, we want to support it. We want to expose the new features to the users, but it does mean that we're kind of running stuff in parallel. So as features are being added to the early access version of Java, we're adding it to the nightly build of the IDE. And, you know, we really, we have to work quite hard to keep those things um, going at the same sort of pace. All right. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Well, people can look, can look forward to that talk um, at the end of the month. I'll put all the information, um, you know, with links and everything, you know, links and everything, obviously in the, in the, uh, in the show notes below. I want to switch gears a little bit. I actually saw a couple of your talks recently. You talked one time about, uh, about actually reading code and the whole session was on reading code. And I was really fascinated by this. Now I'm not a coder, but I mean, I've taken a few classes in programming, but I, I certainly wouldn't you know, consider myself a coder. And but I really interested to I, I'm I'm really interested in linguistics and how people learn, you know, from a text. Um, and I just thought that was really really fascinating. What made you, you know, come up with a whole presentation on reading code? So I was having a conversation with the the person at the time was the mo product marketing manager of our code review tool. And she's also, she's a developer as well. And so we were, we were passing around ideas on, on what we can talk about in terms of code review. And we made this observation that actually, and we're both learning foreign languages. So I'm, I'm learning oh, Spanish. Okay. She was learning French. And she made this observation that when you're learning French or Spanish, you read a lot, you listen a lot. Um, and you certainly don't dive straight in and write things immediately. Like writing is probably way down, like the last thing you do when you learn a new language. And yet when we learn a new programming language, the first, first thing we do is write hello world. So only because we had that context of learning a new natural language, did we suddenly think, hang on, this might not be the best way to learn a new language. This might be a little bit backwards, maybe. And especially given that we were coming from the point of view of code review, when people are reviewing code, they often immediately want to make changes. They want to change the thing that you wrote. 
But I think if we came from a mindset of reading, of understanding, comprehending and learning instead of being motivated to write stuff, that might help to make the code review process a little bit less confrontational. It might help us to have our mind in the right place in terms of of learning because code view is as much about knowledge sharing as it is about making sure it's correct for whatever correct looks like. So yeah, so we were kicking around this idea for a long time about like the value of reading code. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that although I've read, especially in the sort of craftsmanship circles, that reading code is valuable and we should read code and we should read open source code. I kind of dismissed that because generally a lot of the literature is not around reading code. It's about this tutorial, do this, write this, run this. Um, and and I kind of wanted to shift that narrative a little bit. Like, what if reading code was a valuable skill? What if reading and learning was the takeaway, not delivering functionality? Interesting. I've actually had the same experience in terms of learning Japanese. I mean, I'm not going to sit down there and actually write it first, right? Right. It's always you know speaking essentially, You're reading and you know speaking immediately. Um, Interesting how the foreign language aspect of it actually is similar to your thinking in terms of you know software. Um, you mentioned you know code reviews. I'm really interested in this concept of code review. I used to work at Sun on the Open Solaris project, so I was a lot, I was around a lot of you know kernel developers, and this concept of the code review was very very new to me when I first joined that project, and I saw so much interaction over you know over you know code reviews, argument and debate, and learning you know, and had I saw the code change you know th- through this through this through this whole you know process um so i haven't actually haven't viewed your whole session on code reviews but i'm looking forward to it but i just wanted to bring up the you know reading code bit um because i thought it was really really interesting i want to get your feedback on the java community um I was watching one of your videos earlier and you you have seen the evolution of the code and the community and the technology and the, and just really the whole ecosystem. I'm just wondering where you see the Java community today. So, I, well, the most important thing is that the Java community helped me get to where I am today. Um, I was, I, I've, I've written code since I was little, like a lot of developers, I, I kind of wrote it since I was little. Um, I, I, I studied, I, I did Pascal at school. I studied Java at university um, and I became a, uh, a competent programmer through what we normally do with programming, like we're reading stuff and writing stuff and, and doing our day job. I didn't really enjoy my job or get the sorts of satisfying jobs that I have now until I was involved in the community. So I didn't realize that so I thought, you know, you just kind of read stuff, learn stuff and write the code in your work. I didn't know about user groups. I didn't know about mm. the wider community. I mean, some of it is a, is a technology thing as well, because um, having Meetup, having Twitter, having, you know, virtual conferences does expose us to much more um, of what the community looks like. So some of it has been enabled by the changes in technology over the last 20 years or so. But for the longest time, I was... I was a, 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 a classic developer, a nine to five developer of, but I just want to, this is not my life. I just want to get my job done and I want to go home and do like the stuff I do at home. Um, I didn't really realize until I was involved in the Java community, A, how friendly and welcoming they are and B, how that is obviously it's, it's helpful to, to, to springboard your, your career, whatever that looks like. But I wasn't really interested in that at the beginning of my career. I didn't realize it was going to give me a more satisfying job, one that I enjoyed more. And, and that's what the community has been really helpful for, like very welcoming, very, very encouraging, but also um, with great mentors and great role models and great people who are doing different types of roles in different types of companies and realizing, just opening my eyes to the, the wide variety of jobs and roles and companies that employ Java type developers like me. And um, it just it just changed my entire mindset on, on, on being a Java developer. It's really interesting. Um, because every time I ask that question of anybody in the community, they always give me some sort of answer that's similar to that, that it changed, it just essentially expanded all their opinions, all of their, you know, horizons, everything. Uh, community development has a habit of, you know, doing that. And even for non-technical people like myself, um, it's given me many, many opportunities in, you know, the Linux community, Open Solaris and Java and GraalVM and all these different communities that I've been involved with. Even NetBeans actually going way, way back, uh, you know, to Sun. So um, anyway, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. And um 
All right. Well, it was great meeting you here for the first time. Hopefully we can meet actually in person when they let us out of our house someday. <laughs> and um, so you're going to be presenting um, Java 16, new features, learning, uh, learning Java 16 with IntelliJ. And uh, looking forward to it. I'll be there and I'll have all the information down below. And that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much.